Welcome back to the Constitu- Nope. <laughs> late night lately. I don't know what shows I'm doing anymore. They're all blending together. Welcome back to Late Night Lately, episode 7. I'm your host, Chad White. If you didn't know, this is the premiere- Nope. This is the Late Night Podcast for the website, cpluscomedy.com. Like I just said, it's a website. Go there. We're all sorts of all over the place today. So why don't we just get into the monologue? It's a week late. All right, let me pop it open. <laughs> I'm out of breath for some reason. Hey, uh, Trump sat down with Sean Hannity for a 40-minute interview uh, that ranged from all types of topics to the, the, his fake presidency and and uh, maybe he'll run again in 2024. Look, I think we have a clip. Let me sh- show you that. Yeah, I can be tough. Oh, wow. Yeah, I can be tough oh, like your you boys. Like you stop yeah. Like oh, that's you, what you, you like, huh? Oh, now you're on my blanket, bro. Yeah, yeah. Get on my blanket, bro. Oh, now you want to be on my big blanket? Yeah, yeah. 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 Now you want to be on my big blanket? Yeah. Yeah. I can be aggressive. Oh, oh there you are. I can be Yeah. Oh, yeah. What's going on? Over your blanket. Boys. Okay, man. My bad. Okay. Uh, so actually that turns out that was a clip from the movie Bros. I, I don't know how that got in there. I actually have a real clip. Uh, let me show you that. <laughs> All right, if you're listening to the audio, you just heard the clips. And I feel so bad that last clip was actually just a dog sniffing another dog's butt and then puking. Oh, so there was no clip of the interviews, and I'm so sorry for that, for having to deal, you having to deal with these jokes. Hey, listen, former President Trump has been indicted after a grand jury found him guilty of misuse of campaign funds after he paid adult film star Stormy Daniels $130,000 in hush money. Can you imagine Trump in jail trying to impress the other inmates? I lasted really, really long with her. She was begging me to do it again. I had to pay her to stop from bragging about my skills in bed. And also, I killed so many people on the outside. I'm a big murderer. These teardrop tattoos, it's it's not grease. It's not grease from McDonald's hamburger. It's a teardrop tattoo. For the sixth year in a row, Finland has been dubbed the happiest country in the world. And here's a picture of their prime minister celebrating. It It looks pretty happy. In other Finnish news, Finland is set to join the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, otherwise known as NATO, this week. And again, their prime minister is beaming with excitement. (laughs) And finally, a 13-year-old boy spent three years camping outside of his home in order to raise cancer awareness. And they say divorce doesn't have any effect on children. That is the end of the jokes that I have for the show. Don't know why I minimized that window. Hey. Welcome back, episode seven. Last week was a doozy in terms of uh, late night. We got uh, we got John Leguizamo, known actor, coming in to host The Daily Show. We had a, a slew of great guests across the board, and I muted the computer, so just in case when I click on something, I don't hear it. And what... A set of things we got for you today. Listen, let's talk about John Leguizamo hopping on The Daily Show last week. Uh, I didn't know that an actor, even an actor of his caliber, let's just just go ahead and put him up there in the A-list because he's a recognizable guy. John Leguizamo did such a a good job. Like He he did better than, I want to say, a lot of the comedians that have uh, previously been guest hosting. That's... This uh, this show, The Daily Show. And it's amazing how he just hopped on there and just like took the helm and really steered the ship of the show. He was uh, personable. He made mistakes. He, he, he went along with their stupid little green screen bits that I thought, I prayed that they would not be doing with these guest shows. And yet, here they are. They, I mean, the, the green screen thing is coming from uh them doing that 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 stemmed from the pandemic and i just don't like it i don't think it's funny i don't think anything they do with that is funny uh leguizamo did is is just he was so he was so charismatic out there on stage and uh, a lot of it like it just came off naturally it's like it's like when camel reads his monologues it just comes off pretty natural and i got to say he did a fantastic job uh, now the entire week he interviewed i believe 
uh, Latino women the entire time. Let's see. He did uh, Ben de la Creme, who was a, a drag queen. And then they did, he did Anna Navarro. Oh, excuse me. No, Ben de la Creme was for um, uh, uh, Al Franken. Excuse me. Anna Navarro, I, Diane Guerrero, Princess Nokia. Diane Guerrero is uh, one of my future brides. And uh, I have many future brides. And, and then he did Richie Torres. I didn't watch the Thursday episode. Can you tell? <laughs> and then he and then he had enough guts to do an after the cut, or they had enough uh, stuff to do an after the cut. I really enjoyed him. He was he was really really good, and he has great banter with the uh, um, uh, the correspondents, which is something that we that a lot of a lot of other guest hosts did not. Some people can do it well by themselves, and then when it came to the uh, the correspondence, they, they they had a really tough time kind of juggling that. But then they did well with the interviews. Some people just did better with the interviews. Some people did better with the correspondence, and not really the the stand up, the monologue part of it. And one thing, one in an interview that I really liked was the Anna Navarro. If you know her, she's from the talk, the one with all the women squawking. Women squawking. I, that is not the title of this episode. I will not be titling it that. I'm not trying to get canceled. And she, she really, she put up um, a uh, a fight for for bringing together Latinos, Blacks, and Democrats. And as loud as she was, she made a lot of good points, and she can really hold her own in a discussion. And uh, I liked her. I do not plan on watching the talk. I get the uh, the emails from Deadline and Variety summarizing the talk, and it I don't they they're stupid. I don't, not the, not the show is stupid. The show is stupid. Not the people. I just have no interest in watching that show. That show feels like it's live to tape, and and it feels like there's something that Whoopi Goldberg. Or like, or even any one of the hosts have to apologize for every single week. Like, there's at least one thing. Whoopi Goldberg says uh, puppies shouldn't be allowed to vote, and he's like, Whoopi's got a uh, uh, an Instagram post. I'm sorry, I said puppies shouldn't vote, but they shouldn't. <laughs> that was my Whoopi Goldberg impression. I will be touring it. Alongside of my other impressions, I did a shoulder workout this morning. My shoulder's killing me. This is also the same shoulder that was uh, hurt. I used to work at uh, a UPS factory, and this is also the same shoulder that just was in so much pain from doing from literally doing the same thing all of the time. Just shoveling a bag down a chute, getting rid of the bag. Shoveling a bag full of packages down a chute, getting rid of the bag. It was the worst. I hated it. And I, Jesus. Oh, I hate it so much. Next up, let's talk about Seth Myers. He did four Closer Look segments last week. Four. Which, which, I, which may not be unheard of, but usually, typically how, how his show goes, how the uh, uh, late night with Seth Myers goes is, he does monologue, then he does a uh, prepared bit, like Closer Look, Amber Says What, uh, the, the Seth Jokes Can't Tell, Jokes Seth Can't Tell, uh, Karen G Doesn't Know How to Use Google, uh, the rest of those things. And <laughs> Karen G Doesn't Know How to Use Google. I love that one. That's a funny title. I don't like the sketch, but I like the, I like the title I gave it. And then he does interview segment. And then sometimes bit with the writer, then another interview segment. More or less, it was the same thing all the time. Usually he does Closer Look twice a week. But last week, it was just four straight days. And, and I didn't notice it until it happened. So he did one on Monday, Tuesday, then Wednesday, and then Thursday. And then when I initially wrote down my list... It was, he did two in a row, and they were, uh, they were very funny, obviously. That's the reason why I mentioned it. 
I don't know how. I think it's the uh, head writer Sal. Oh, head, yeah, head writer. I think Sal. Sal's a head writer. Head writer of Late Night. Seth Myers. I believe it is spelled Myers wrong. I believe it is Sal. And he's, or, uh, or Alex Blaze. But one of those people, is it Sal Gentry? Sal Gentile. Okay. Sal Gentile writes, is one of the writers. Uh, or is it, I don't care. I really don't care. Anyway, just to think that, you know, somebody has to write these and then other people have to source the clips and then they have to think of jokes around it. I think it works. I think it works in their, in their, in their head writer is Alex uh, Bays. Um, and I, I, it works in their favor and I just can't believe that they did. I mean, that's, that's, let's, let's average out the time of a, a closer look. Sometimes they, they range from the early ones were like from six minutes, seven minutes, and now they can go upwards of 15 sometimes, uh, depending. And then they even had a breakout one time episode of a closer look that was like 22 minutes or something like that. Uh, and I, I mean, it's, it, you know, just to write, let's do an average of 11 minutes. That's 44 minutes that week that were just dedicated to that, sh- to that segment. Speaking of late nights, Andy Samberg stopped by to promote dig man on, uh, the paramount owned, uh, comedy central. And he, he did something that has been something that I would have loved to have done on late night myself, which was, um, uh, his own segments for for late night that are just just poorly done riffs on what Seth already does. He has a grosser look. Uh, he's he's just got uh, Seth gets roasted or something like that. And it I mean it is just just textbook goofing around two two friends goofing around. It's something that really it's 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 when 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 somebody that somebody else knows comes onto a show it is just uh when the host knows the person personally it is it is so great it's the same thing that happens with Fallon and anyone from SNL uh, or or Timberlake uh same thing that happens with uh Stephen Colbert and anybody from his daily show days i just i really like that or you know similarly it's Ben Affleck when he pops in on uh Jimmy Kimmel's show and he was there for two segments, a total of 20 minutes, talking about the movie Air that premieres soon. Uh, and he's, I mean, when you get Ben Affleck with somebody that he knows, he really opens up. And he, he's a really fun guy. And uh, they brought in, a, they had a little Matt Damon uh, video visit that was pretty funny. Uh, we got to hear about why Viola Davis was chosen to play Michael Jordan's mother and you know, he's the reason uh, she or uh, uh, Michael Jordan asked for that directly. Um, what 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 do they do with the the Michael Jordan problem inside of the Air movie? Which is you can't you can't cast anybody to play Michael Jordan because he's Michael Jordan. Because you're gonna know it's not Michael Jordan. So they just use clips and a stunt double or somebody who who is playing that young version of Michael Jordan. It's a great. It's just it's just a great interview all around. Next up, we got Tariq Trotter. Uh, there's this thing that uh, that that Fallon that Fallon's team does, where uh, they will they they have like four or five clips from the news, and they will have uh, uh, Tariq Trotter will chime in, and it'll be it'll be like a recall uh, or uh, it's it's almost always a recall thing, uh, but he but he'll uh, Tariq Trotter who is the black thought from the roots, he will, he'll chime in and go, Oh man, I really like, I just got a new Hyundai car. I can't believe they're recalling it. And then uh, the deep, the further in they, they go, the more he repeats whatever the newscasters say. And I just think it's, I, I don't know what it is. I just think it's so funny. And I remember the first time I saw it a couple of months ago, I thought it was just the, the funniest thing in the world. And I will keep pointing it out that, they do these. They do these things like if the if the newscaster messes up, then uh, Black Thought and and Jimmy will will repeat everything that person said like right before they say it and they mess it up in the exact same way. It's so good, so good. 
Next thing up is uh, Jimmy Fallon brings these cool new sunglasses to uh, uh, late night where they're reversible, where the lens, it's not the lens, where the uh, the casing around the lens, uh, the arms, the arms are reversible so you can flip it to either have a blue side or a black side. And uh, I mean, you know, God willing, they are, they are ugly. <laughs> I do not like the way they look. They look like cat eye sunglasses, uh, but they're they're done for a good cause. They're going to the pupil project. The proceeds, one hundred percent of the proceeds, are going to the pupil project, and I just think it's a great idea. And he gave some to the entire audience. Uh, I do. They look like women's sunglasses to me. They look like because they're like all sharp on these corners. They look like those glasses from like the nineteen forties that uh, uh, the the women and the operators would use. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Dial nine one nine. That was my impression of a uh, one of the lady operators. Gonna tour that with the Whoopi Goldberg one. And finally, Reggie Watts. He put on uh, white face to perform and a, a, a costume to perform stand up for um, uh, the Late Late Show, which I think was just fantastic. It doesn't even matter if he said anything. If he said anything at all, he just came out. And he had blonde hair. His name was Morvin Splaversby. And uh, it was just like he like truly could have just come out and stood stood there for four minutes. And I thought it was, and I thought it would have been funny. I, it, it's very funny that they uh, did this. And I, uh, I think, again, I think it's a good, a good, a good thing. All right. Anyway, that's what happened. And late night, uh, those are my favorite things. And late night, you might notice that they're all from the top of the week. Most of them are from the top of the week. And that is the truth. <laughs> hey, let's move on. Uh, this is the thing I want to talk about. This comes from Variety, written by Michael Schneider. The Late Late Show with James Corden will end its run with three more carpool karaoke's in a segment with the Kardashians. It's amazing how we are ba- we are at the end of James Corden's rule of the Late Late Show, and it's probably the last version of Late Late Show that there will be. Uh, I think most uh, in part to the decline in ratings and as well as the decline of online stuff, online views. And I, I think, you know, uh, well, I, I'll get to this when, during his last week, what I guess I'll cover every single episode of uh, his show. But it was of that last week. I'm not going to cover every single episode. <laughs> I've barely seen enough to constitute a percentage. I've seen enough. Uh, and, and and we are at a point where he only has 12 episodes left before it ends in, at the end of April. Yeah, it's, yeah just, a, just a couple of episodes left. I guess this week, the next week, and the following week. Yeah, yeah, that's, man, I can't believe it. Uh, and it's 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 been something. And again, I'll, I'll talk about that when I get to that. And apparently, this is revealed at Pally Fest uh, this past week. I guess this should have been this episode. I don't really care though. Uh, the Late Late Show uh, had a had a Pally Fest panel at the Dolby Theater at Pally, and uh, let's say the last hour is going to be on Thursday, April twenty seventh. They're going to have a prime time special that night. The last last Late Late Show with James Corden <laughs> carpool karaoke special, which will air at ten p.m. and feature Tom Cruise. They're going to have epic musical performances of The Lion King at the Pantages Theater in Hollywood. Brian Cranston was the moderator. We're going to get a, so we're essentially we're just going to get a bunch of more. If you've noticed in the past couple of weeks, they've been doing a lot more uh, carpool karaoke's. I want my, my wonderment is will they continue doing carpool? Will carpool karaoke, the series continue on Apple TV Plus, which you, it used to be on Apple Music. Uh, given that Brian Cox and Alan Cumming were both on, are gonna, both going to be on uh, this this season, I don't understand why. I don't want to hear Brian Cox singing. Like I don't even want to see that man attempt to sing. Oh, there's another video I wanted to watch and I wanted to mention. I'll just mention it in passing. It's called... For the Late Late Show, it's a big night for middle names. I did not watch it, and I, and it's just the intro of the show uh, with uh, Jeff Goldblum and Owen Wilson, you know, popping up and after the doors are knocked on and they talk. Anyway, I thought it was an interesting thing. To look at. Uh, okay, 
So they've they've been doing a lot more carpool karaoke's, and they've been getting, I get like bit like you know a pretty much bigger big enough people. Lil Nas X they had on a couple of weeks ago. Bad Bunny they had on a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I I mean, it's it's like they're still missing people. It, it's 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 so strange to me how. They they've gotten so many people for carpool karaoke, but they've yet they've they've yet to still hit a lot of people. That's what this show brought. They brought they brought carpool karaoke. They really if Jimmy Kimmel introduced the late night to to YouTube uh, and and like in video dist, online video distribution and Jimmy Fallon uh, perfected it, then um, I I would I would say that Corden brought it in to this next era of the internet with you know instagrammable moments and tiktok i still think jimmy fallon and his team they were in they were i mean it's just because of the right time they were in the right time and the right moment to make things for late night perfect and and so there so you know both camel like all three of those shows will go down in history all hosted by james's jimmy's james's James's, Jimmy's, James's. <laughs> That's a good title. All right. Let's write it down. Okay. Uh, da, 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 da. Now, apparently, Corden said he'd be willing to return the host of the Tony Awards. Uh, they were going to play, oh, they did play Spill Your Guts or Fill Your Guts. That's fun. I do like Spill Your Guts or Fill Your Guts. That is definitely one of my favorite things he does. Uh, I wish he would ask harder questions to the people. The, the name, the, the, the thing of Spill Your Guts or Fill Your Guts was they had cuisine that is often found around the world or something that's just, you know, straight up gross. And, uh, he would ask people like Harry Styles, Will Ferrell, like a question like who is the person you hate to work with the most and then they had a choice of eating you know a fish eyeball uh or 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 answering the question i would always i if i was good if i was going to do that i would always like be like i'll answer the question answer the question and then immediately take a bite of whatever because i think that'd be funny that'd be a very funny thing if they do reboot uh, at midnight for this show. I just over, over this show. I don't think I like. I don't know if that's even gonna work. That should definitely still be a Comedy Central thing because you can you can do so much more. Anyway, we're coming down to these final moments, and it seems that Corden is ready to go. Have you been watching the show lately? It just it's just <laughs> it has not been as uh, tried and true as it was, let's say, two years ago, or even three or four years ago. Or maybe it's been the same thing. I wonder if, and I probably shouldn't ask this now, but is was the show successful in bringing that British format, the panelist thing, over? The Graham Norton show has been doing the panelist thing, you know, uh, forever, and it works there. But seeing these numbers in the past couple of uh, years on their YouTube channel, uh, it just and it's the the things that 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 hit it off. They hit it off, but the things that don't, they really don't. And that's a majority of the videos now. I mean, I'm looking at a stand up from three days ago, who has nine like on the Late Late Show YouTube channel, who has nine point six thousand views. And you scroll back a couple weeks. There's a. Uh, there's a uh, there's a bit part there's a part there's a video uh, with Hong Chow, and that has twenty seven thousand views. It's three weeks ago. I it, it's just uh, it's it's so you know disheartening to see this in late night, and 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 only the the most popular things where like James goes to Mars and he does a show for a week on Mars. <laughs> That's the only stuff that that even gets big there. But we'll see. We'll we'll come back in three weeks, and we'll definitely do uh, an examination of that show. I'll make it two parts. Will I? I don't know. Uh, who says I'll even remember? All right, I'm done. Hey, listen. If you like what you heard here, 
head to the website, cpluscomedy.com, where you can see other podcasts, including uh, LinkedIn Logs, which is my LinkedIn influencer podcast slash OnlyFans thing, I guess. I don't know. Platform. Uh, you can see, you can. I try to become a LinkedIn influencer and also try to get a job because your boy needs it. You can also see the Constitutionals podcast, which is our premier podcast, which is uh, entertainment business news, and I cover that in depth. If you want to see a video version of those shows and all these shows, head to youtube.com slash cpluscomedy, where you can also see News Time, which is like the daily show, except way less funny. You can uh, get your podcast wherever you get your podcast. You can follow us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok at cpluscomedy. Follow me at Chad Black White. Rate, review, subscribe. Tell your friends about it. And this is the end of the show. I really should have started the music a long time ago. But you know what? It makes me, it allows me to do this. And, uh, and this part is the part I like the most because now I'm just talking over the music. All right, that's it. Bye.